ironically, I feel like we keep saying the same thing over and over that so much of this boils down to what your actual goal and yeah, what desire you want. is. Because these two plans, I mean, in terms of the, the net total at the end, you definitely get the higher dollar amount. So I would put this in the win column for you. But to be honest, he's kind of, he looks good in both of these scenarios. Like these are, these both work out well for him. Right. But the difference between him and the first scenario is he makes a lot of money so he can absorb a lot more risk. That's the fucking main difference. All right. If I am doing Dave's plan and I'm talking to a guy who makes over $100,000 a year, Dave's plan isn't the smartest plan, but it doesn't put them in like any untoward risk necessarily. If I'm talking to a guy who makes a lot less than that, who makes 70000 or less, Dave's plan not only is not the best plan, it puts them in a fuck ton of risk. That's the difference. But he never, ever specifies that. It's always, well, if you want to be a millionaire, do what I tell you. That's my point. There's a very, it's not subtle even, really. If I'm talking to guy A who only makes 60000 a year, and I'm talking to guy B who makes one hundred and fifty, we have very different conversations. I don't tell them the same fucking thing because they're not in the same position. Right? Right. Their, their the ability to absorb risk to deal with, you know, random things that happen and just aren't the same. Right. If I'm talking to a guy who's, who's makes all of his money or, or a woman doing something that's physical, right? then we really need to have a talk about, well, what happens if you get injured? Right? As opposed to a guy who makes all his money like, like, you know, kind of like I do, where I mostly just talking to people and sitting at a desk. It's intellectual. I don't have to fucking lift things. Right. I don't have to be on my feet all day. It's a whole different discussion. You know, if I have a disability, it's like, okay, well, I can do most of my work remote or from home. It's not a big damage. But if I'm a guy, the kind of guy who works in construction, or I work in retail, and I've got to be physically there and on my feet, different conversation. That's my point, is it's the same answer. Doesn't matter who we're talking to for Dave. And his justification is, well, we did a study that first off, A, isn't a study, it's a survey, and it's self-reported. B, they've never published the data, it's never been peer-reviewed. And C, whatever, all these conclusions he's drawing from it are just whatever they want to draw from it. Duncan, they, they actually, you can order their, you can get a PDF of that study. We've discussed this a couple of times. I've read it. <laughs> Oh, okay. They don't release the data and it hasn't been reviewed. They oh, just okay. give you they just give you their their conclusions. They don't give you the data. Oh, huh. You can't you can't review the survey answers. Interesting. Hmm. Which is what okay, you so do when you don't they, want they, Right, they only give you the manner in which they have interpreted um, it. assessed the data rather than the actual data itself. Yeah. Which is what you do when you don't want people to double check your work. So we'll just finish this up real quick with him and then we'll go into the Shark Tank thing. As we've studied millionaires over the last 25 years, and we just completed the largest study of millionaires ever done, um, over 10,000 of them, uh, we find to start with that somewhere in the neighborhood, 79% inherited nothing and somewhere in the neighborhood of 90% inherited not enough to make them millionaires. So 90% of millionaires, in other words, are not millionaires because of inherited money, but because of their habits and what they do with their money. And the two primary things... See, we that's, once again, like you pointed out, just because they didn't inherit the money, because somebody didn't die and leave them the money, doesn't mean they weren't given a lot of money, right? 
But what he does is he skips that and goes right to my assumption, which is, or his assumption, sorry, which is, oh, well, it's just because they're just so good with money. It's their habits. They're just so good with money. See, it's all bullshit. It's just whatever they want to read out of it. We see that those habits that cause them to be successful, meaning hitting a million dollar net worth and above, is the primary initial levels of wealth. The first million or two million is 401k and a paid for house. Now, the paid for house not only is going up in value and stabilizes, but we do not find them saying, I'm going to borrow as much three and a half percent money as I can borrow because I can invest it and make a better rate of return. We do not find them doing that. We yeah. Find <laughs> yeah. So he, I don't know if he's about to do this now, but my, my prediction is he's going to do this weird thing that he likes to do where he likes to tell people that, um, well, if that was the case, you know, we would just tell you to go out and take another mortgage, borrow as much money as possible against your home so you can turn around and investment, invest it. He, lo he loves to tell, that's, he likes to try to spin the logic that way because he knows people will go, what? No, I wouldn't do that. And then he goes, yeah, that's effectively what you're doing by keeping this debt around. Wait, wait let's, uh, that's interesting. I haven't seen that yet. Let's run that scenario. So the. Okay. The, so let, we'll slow down back well, up with what he says. Well, let me, let me try to guess real quick. I, would say, I think I understood what you said, which is, all right. Okay. So I have. Sorry, I well, okay. So, uh, you're the client. You owe hundred thousand on the house. You have a hundred thousand in savings. You say, Duncan, should I pay off the house? Right. And I said, well, you could pay it off or invest it. Right. Dave's argument you're saying is going to be, well, would you take out a hundred thousand dollars on a house, right? A home equity mortgage to invest. And they're the same thing. That's what he's saying. Oh my God, that's it's, fucking stupid. No, they're not so the same it's, thing. It's, what it is, is it's the way that he spins it to get people mentally to jump on board his protocol because most people are not logically going to say, you know, Let's say, let's say I, I've got that hundred thousand in savings and I owe a hundred thousand on my house, but my, my house is worth 200,000. Mm. That would be like you say, let's invest your hundred thousand. Why don't you take a home equity loan out for another hundred thousand so we can invest that too, because mathematically that's better. That's essentially what Dave likes to spin to people, um, that not paying their house is like doing, it's like choosing to take out oh, as money. much money as possible in the form of a loan in order to invest. Okay. And then he says, well, why wouldn't you do that? You know, I and then as people discuss why they wouldn't do that, you know, well, that's really risky, et cetera. Um, then he goes, okay, well, that's exactly why you shouldn't want to have your mortgage hanging around your head in the first place. That's a, that's a cheap trick. So the reason you, the reason you wouldn't take out a home equity loan versus a, a regular home purchase loan is a home purchase loan is backed by the federal government. There's a lot more security protections behind that. So if you fall okay, behind. Let's pause. Dave won't say what kind of loan. That's not his point. No, I know just, that's, just that's my he, point he, is. He's going to throw that out there. There's a difference here though. That's the difference is one is a lot more risk than the other, right? I have a current home loan on my house, right? A home equity loan is not necessarily backed by the federal government. They're usually not. And if you can't pay it, then they take your house. Now, a home purchase loan, where you purchase the house originally, you're not taking money off the equity. That is usually backed by uh, Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, which is the federal government, which is backed by the federal government, right? So on those things, it's harder for them to take your home if you can't pay it. There's a lot more repayment options. There's a lot more things you can do, and there's more things you can do in like a bankruptcy if that's the situation. So those are a lot less risky. Home equity loan, on the other hand, you're fucking fully on the hook. You get a bankruptcy, that's, they're, take, they're taking the house. You can't pay the house, you can't pay that off. Something goes wrong, 
they're taking the house. There's no federal protections to really help you there because it's not federal money backing it. So totally stupid, totally, completely two different things. You haven't heard him do that before? No, I haven't, but that's, it's the stupidest fucking thing I've, but I can see where if you don't know the difference, you could fall for that trap. It's, it's kind of some <clears throat> mental trickery, but yeah. I mean, it's mental trickery, which in some ways is effective, but in other ways doesn't make a lot of sense because behaviorally, behaviorally people just simply are not going to do that. So what you're offering them is you're saying, oh, well, but if you like how this other scenario plays out, then you might as well just do this other thing, which is pretty much bonkers. Like that, that nobody really logically does. I wouldn't say nobody, but virtually nobody mm -hmm. would do very small amount of people would think that that was actually a good idea and then use it to spin it toward this is why my choice is the only choice you know right no no but it's all bullshit i mean it's it's the whole thing with the the millionaire study thing that every conclusion they have is it's whatever they want to make up it really is it's whatever they didn't inherit the money which means they all did it just because they're so smart and they have great habits where did you get that conclusion? Because they didn't inherit the money. It must be because they're all geniuses. And they're all just have really good habits. Right? And and 90% of the people in the study don't like eggs. So if you like eggs, you're never going to be a millionaire. We can... It's all bullshit. They're making... They're trying to draw lines between dots that don't connect. So... Just ridiculous stuff. Plus, as we can see with the John Chicago situation, for a guy like that, it really it doesn't matter that much either way because there's not a big risk factor. But for a guy who makes uh, with Nick in um, Missouri, who has less money, it is a big risk factor. Well, I mean, John's, John's scenario, you know, yeah, it's not as much of a risk factor for him, but also the results are relatively similar in both directions. I mean, one gets him out of the mortgage debt a little faster. The other one gets him into a little bit higher of a savings a little faster. Or a potato, potato. It, uh, they, they're pretty similar, those yeah. results. Um, yeah, but so when you're... Kind of he wants to do. Yeah, but when there's my, that's my point is, when you're making that kind of money, it's like one bit here, two bits there, whatever you, whatever you feel more comfortable with. But when you're talking about a situation where, no, there's there's going to be a much higher risk, you can't give the same answer, but he gives the same answer both times. And one puts a guy in a horrible position where he could it could destroy his life, and the other, it's like, eh, it go either way. But once again, when you're making a lot of money, a lot of that shit, just, a lot of that risk just goes away. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs>